the things I hate about the never-ending debate regarding global warming is that the climate change Cassandras are so sure of themselves and so full of themselves. You know, this whole idea of how the debate is over and how man-made climate change is indeed an irrefutable fact and those who take issue with this are deniers and what a loaded descriptor that is. The latest Exhibit A is a story in the current issue of New York Magazine, something that resembles summer fiction more so than a factual feature. Entitled The Unhabitable Earth, the subhead reads, Famine, economic collapse, a sun that cooks us, what climate change could wreak sooner than you think. The accompanying photo is that of the fossilized remains of a skull still clad in a pair of aviator sunglasses. Now I'll cut to the chase. The jump the sharknado moment in the story comes when reporter David Wallace Wells pens the following, quote, Humans, like all mammals, are heat engines, surviving means having to continually cool off like panting dogs. For that, the temperature needs to be low enough for the air to act as a kind of refrigerant, drawing heat off the skin so the engine can keep pumping. At 7 degrees of warming, that would become impossible for large portions of the planet's equatorial band, and especially the tropics where humidity adds to the problem. In the jungles of Costa Rica, for instance, where humidity routinely tops 90%, simply moving around outside when it's over 105 degrees Fahrenheit would be lethal, and the effect would be fast. Within a few hours, a human body would be cooked to death from both inside and out. End quote. Did you get that, folks? Once the thermometer hits 105 degrees Fahrenheit, or 40.5 degrees centigrade, Wallace Wells suggests this is going to happen. Johnny, this is Dolce. <sighs> yeah, by 2080, according to Wallace Wells, who apparently has access to a time machine, we're all going to turn into a planet full of human torches, spontaneously bursting into flames. But me thinks this guy is serving up deep fried BS. There are places on the planet that already experience 105 Fahrenheit temperatures, and no, people are not being cooked both inside and out. I've personally experienced such temperatures. In 1995, I visited Palm Springs, which was experiencing a record heat wave. On July 28th and 29th of that year, the temperature soared to 123 degrees Fahrenheit. In other words, 18 degrees higher than the supposed red zone Wallace Well warns about. Now, if you don't recall any stories about the population of Palm Springs being evacuated due to people being cooked to death on the street, that's understandable, folks, because, well, it never happened. In fact, many of the people I was with on that trip went cycling and played tennis and golf. Was it toasty? Oh, let me tell you. It was so hot, I actually saw a dog chasing a cat, and they were both walking. But the point is, 51 degrees Celsius is indeed a very, very unpleasant temperature to endure, especially if you're doing anything physical. But nobody passed out, nobody was hospitalized, and certainly nobody burst into flames like the Fantastic Four's Johnny Storm. Bottom line, the climate change debate will continue to rage for decades to come, especially when there are so many progressives making so much money off such fear-mongering. But it would be nice if these global warming hustlers kept one caveat in mind, which is this. While you are indeed entitled to your own opinions, you are not entitled to your own facts. For the Rebel Dot Media, I'm David the Menzoid Menzies. Like what you just saw? Then click subscribe below and never miss another Rebel video.